Um, but look, let's let's talk about Romero now. What is the comment from uh, Ange Postecoglou in this press conference? Well, Romero obviously was um, retweeted this tweet after the game, suggesting that complaining about Spurs not organising private travel for their international stars, and also saying, "Oh, this is from an Argentinian Argentinian journalist, Gaston Edul, saying that he had to play the game with a fever." Oh, Ange Postecoglou was asked in his press conference today about the retweet from Romero he says the retweet was mentioned uh, was mentioned to me after the game but it wasn't mentioned to me before the game all the players were back by Thursday for a Sunday game prior to the game there was nothing mentioned is it I don't know if he's uh but it was fine. made after the game the retweet wasn't it yeah, but I think he's saying, like, nothing was said to me about complaints about travel time or anything before the game. I don't know if he's firing back or he's, he's suggesting that Romero had ample time to recover for the uh, for the game uh, and ask against Arsenal. Um, obviously, Romero... Is, is firing back. Huh? I think saying that he had ample time is firing back at Romero. He didn't say. He just said all the players were back by Thursday for a Sunday game. Uh, and he said prior to the game, there was nothing mentioned. So I guess he's suggesting that, you know, if there was a problem, someone should have said something before the game. Particularly with his fever. Um, so, obviously, Romero doing that, um, it doesn't. It was a bit of a weird uh, situation after the game, you know, uh, retweeting potential criticism of, of the club. Uh, he hasn't started the season in great form, um, you know, been responsible for quite, probably all, you could argue, all our goals. He's had a big part uh, to play um, in all the goals we've conceded so far this season, albeit he did have a great game against Everton where he scored. But... Um, what is going on with Romero at the moment? Is is there something in the air? Is I've, there is there a bit of a what do you call it? Um, what's the word? Just like something bubbling under the surface. I think something is brewing with Romero at the moment. He's got two years left in his contract. I feel like he's seen the interest from Madrid and stuff like that. He knows that if interest from Madrid comes, Daniel Levy will make it very hard for him to leave the club and you know charge ridiculous money and money that he's worth as a footballer uh, with what he's achieved with Argentina and what he's shown for Tottenham Hotspur. And I feel like he's angling. Um, you know, he's looking for ways to angle for a move, and I feel like that will happen next summer. Um, but this is not the way to go about it. I feel like his performances have been poor this season. A lot of the goals that we have conceded have come from uh, maybe flaws in his game. Um, you've seen that in the Newcastle game. You've seen that in the Leicester game. And now you've seen that in the Arsenal game as well. And I love Romero. I think he's a top quality player. But I just feel there is something brewing in the air with him. I don't know what you think, Dave. Um, I think the problem's twofold, to be brutally honest with you. I think one of them... I think his head has been turned by Real Madrid. There's no doubt about it. You know, when Real Madrid come calling, the players end up going. I think he's probably sitting there waiting for Madrid to go. Well, the problem is, I think Romero's absolutely shattered. You know, he's he went deep in the World Cup, won that. Yeah, you know, or went deep Copa America, won that. And I don't think he's he hasn't had as much time off as maybe other players have had. And also, he's had barely any preseason. And you hear a lot of uh, players, you know, that have been on international break duty. I heard some of the England players talk about over the international break that they're using some of the Premier League games to try and build their fitness up and get up to speed, which is not ideal. And I also think that's a contributing factor to what we're seeing. So I think it's twofold. Mm, Max? Um few things the Real Madrid thing um don't think he's playing in a way or, or due to having his head turned I think that you can by playing badly you can undo your Real Madrid opportunity so I don't think that's a thing um I think that um you say uh, that Max but you know you've seen it with plenty of players in the past that you know that are looking for ways out sometimes it's yeah. not even intentional sometimes it's not even intentional these yeah. little things slip into your game and I don't think by and large Romero has even been bad this season it's just been a few little moments in games a yeah, few no, little lapses I, in concentration th that that comment was only related to attitude and I don't think that's a thing that's affected I think that actually he is uh, he is a guy that does have a kind of winning mentality and a feistiness and uh, about mm. him, and I actually think that um, um, he improved a lot of the issues that he had in his game and his over eagerness and lunging yeah. challenges. Agreed. And, 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 and actually, you know, all the, the the yellow cards and all the bits. Actually, the latter part of last season that didn't happen. Uh, you know, I think that his if you look at his stats last season from a defensive point of view and you look at someone everyone's hailing as like Saliba um 
goals conceded aside, which is a team thing, he came out on top on every stat, right? In in in, in the tackles, interceptions, headed clearances, whatever you want to call it, passes, assists, goals. It doesn't all of that stuff. He came out on top on every single stat, right? Now you could say that we were having to defend more. I wouldn't even say that's the case this season because we've been 60, 70% possession. Actually, we've had to defend the least in the league. That is a reality. So and maybe actually the least in Europe, if you go by the uh, possession stats, that's not the issue. Um, I'm a massive fan of his. He does one thing which frustrates the absolute hell out of me, which is when we're in possession. And um, we mentioned it earlier. Very slow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not even, a sp- it's just putting his foot on the ball. Like, Trying Slow to, to move of, the ball on is what I'm... What yeah, I mean. being a bit of a maestro, you know, trying to pick that killer thing or not doing it or killing the game. It's like he's playing like a pivot in futsal. You know, when you play there and you wait until that thing is open, if they don't come press you, you don't move it. I'm sorry, that's just not the way. We need to move the opposition and our players lose momentum. If you don't keep the ball moving, the players lose momentum. The ball should never die and the ball always dies at his yeah. feet, sometimes for a good few seconds. So I think that's one bit. But the other bit, I think that he's another victim of the same issue. Absent fullbacks. Uh, Just an absent, a a, a back four that doesn't know where they're going to be at any given time. You know, he gets sucked into having to go onto the right or onto, and I know centre backs need to do it. But by and large, he's having to worry about it most of the time. Why? Because they turn the ball over. And where's the dear old Poro is on the edge of the D of the opposition box. Sometimes when the game's coming down the other side, which is even worse. So I think they're all compromised. I think that he's compromised. I think we are very fortunate and that we may have what may turn out, turn out to be one of the greatest defenders in the game of football in Van der Ven. Uh, I feel we'll lose him at some point rather than Romero. Uh, I think he's the one I'd, I'd, ever, I'd worry about that in two, three years' time, big guns are coming in. He, he's just a full package. He's my man crush. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> man, the I think he's all our man crushes, man. He's just, he's just everything about him. He's a class act as a player, as a thing, as, you know, he's a whatever. He's even a handsome fella. He's got it all going on. He's 22. <laughs> I think he's just, you know, absolutely world class, right? Uh, and, and, and he will be for sure. Um, so I just think that he can cover it, but I think we're all comp- we're all compromised by this system. I'm, I'm mm. adamant that that's how, that's that's affecting every single player. I tell you, who's even even Madison is massively affected by this. Mm. He can't pull a string. He just got a sea of people in front of him. So I just think this issue runs through the team. Um, and uh, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not so worried about. Romero in what Romero does I'm worried in what Ange is going to do to fix all this that will help Romero that will help all of all of our team but Max with Romero going into the last two years of his contract surely something needs to be sorted by this summer whether we give him a new contract or we sell him because this is going to be this is is going to be the highest value that he can get two years two years in the summer I think it is he's got two and a half years left yeah 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 Uh, it's simple uh, we, we need to be absolutely ruthless and brutal on this. Sign her out. Yeah. Pay up. Pay up because you need to. If you think that if you think they're of the level, look, when you first bring someone in, they're a gamble. When you want to renew the contract, you're either renewing it because they're good enough or they're not good enough. If you think he's good enough and you want to keep him, pay up. Because you can't you can't keep him on a, a, a um, you know, uh, if he's one of the top defenders in the world, he's a World Cup winner, whatever. He's adapted to the Premier League. Yeah, there's some tweaks around this stuff. But at the end of the day, if you think it's good enough, you have to give him a wage that makes him extend. If not, don't want to sign it. Now. You've got like six month window to do that transaction. If you don't do it, then take the deal. Because ultimately, it would just be another depreciating, decaying asset. Uh, and we can't afford to wait for their you know, poor performance and then spending the last six months not wanting to train. You know, we can't we can't be doing that. So uh, we just need to, you know, it's either that or we go the way of the Chelsea. And I don't think that that baseball system of eight, nine, ten year contracts is a way to go. Daniel will never go that route. So, uh, uh, yeah. 
Do we think we could have been a bit smarter at the beginning of this season with Romero in terms of what Dave was saying, you know, went deep in the Copa America, um, didn't have a lot of pre-season. Could we have, look what you saw what Man City did with Rodri and Foden, you know, gave them a few games at the beginning of the season just to, cap, you know, uh, um, not not put them under immediate pressure, not put them I in from the start. I thought they were actually injured though, those two. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if they're actually injured or they've just been rested. Like, uh, like I think Foden's injured. I'm not sure about Rodri. Like, could we have not just played Dragosheen like at the beginning of the season? We should have. Al- al- allow Romero a bit. Maybe Romero's just struggling a bit with with the, with the amount of football he's had to play, a lot of the travelling time and all that kind of stuff. And maybe if we look look how Dragosheen played against uh, Newcastle, if we would have just started him, um, given him an opportunity at the beginning of the season, allow Romero just uh, an opportunity to feel his way into the season rather than putting him straight in. Could that not have been maybe a smarter use of the squad at the beginning of the season? We can be hindsighty on this stuff. To be honest with you, I'm not sure that that would have been the difference. If you want, to, if you ask me what we should have done with Romero, if you're worried about this situation, and by the way, that little real murmur I think was quite a while ago, like the first time, right? That should have been a pre-season thing. Boom! Here's the money. Here's the thing on the table. Done. Put that whole thing to bed before we even kick a ball, right? And and that's really just about the force. That, that you need to have uh, uh, in order to kind of close those situations out. Uh, and then maybe there wouldn't be anything niggling, niggling in his head about that potential thing because he's either he's either in or he's not in. If he's not, then, you know, then, 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 then we replace. And there are there were players and opportunities to to replace that you might take, right? You know, like uh, Gui or whatever his name, you know, the, the new, the, the, the Crystal Palace one or yeah. whatever. There are players out there that are, that are gettable at this stage. Or, or certainly were in the off season. I just feel like Romero at this stage of his career, what is he, 26, 27 now? Mm-hmm. How old is he? Um, at this stage of his career, being a World Cup winner, multiple Copa America winner, I just feel like he thinks that he's ready for that next step. And if he can't fulfill that next step now with Tottenham Hotspur and go and challenge for big trophies at domestic level, titles and cups and Champions Leagues then there's no reason for him not to get his head turned because I think he's of that ability and he's of that quality. You look at you look at it with Bale, Modric, Harry Kane, you know, where as soon as one of the big boys come calling, that can guarantee them trophies or even guarantee them the challenge of challenging every single season for multiple trophies. They will jump ship, you know. And I think this is another reason why we've sort of let ourselves down this window. We have a couple of players coming up with, two, you know, two or a bit year left on their contract. Well, I don't think we've done enough to signal our intent to go and, you know, really challenge for trophies. And I think, you know, if you're Romero, you look at the summer transfer window we've just had compared to the one we've had previous. It almost looks like we've pulled back a little, pulled the reins mm. in a little. Um, you know, we haven't we haven't brought in enough players to really steer this club towards the ambitions of what some of the squad say their ambition is and also the manager. And I think, if you know, if we don't get it right this season, if we don't win a trophy this season, why wouldn't Romero want to go to Real Madrid? He has the chance to, you know, he's already got a World Cup, Cup America. He's already won everything you can with your national team. Why wouldn't he want to add club club medals and trophies into his cabinet and become one of the most glamorized defenders uh, you know of all time why would I I, I don't before? doubt that but if he keeps making these kind of mistakes and Madrid going to pay the money at the end of the they, season required to get him they'll keep coming Madrid usually if they have they, if they have the guy that they, that they want they, they, they'll go and get him Did, you know, not they after no not if he keeps making guy. these mistakes they won't they will. They, look, they won't. I, I think, what, look, they're going to pay. They're going to pay. They're going to pay between Madrid eighty. They're going to pay between eighty and hundred million for a player who keeps Madrid, making mistakes. Madrid are one of the most savvy clubs in world football. They'll look at that and they'll go exactly what I just said. He hasn't had any time off. He's absolutely bollocks. He needs a little bit of a rest, and we'll get him back to his best. Guarantee you. No, they don't. They they're not spending these big money. Uh, this money on these kind of players at the moment. Uh, Real Madrid. They will. Their back line is aging. They, they, that's the next. They got Rudiger. They got Militao. They got defenders there. They're gonna the, the money Tottenham are, even with two years left in the deal. The Tottenham are gonna demand at least eighty million. It's from well documented. Kuti they desperately need a centre back for the long term. Right, but they're not gonna spend it on a player who's not had a good season. They won't do it. Uh, they'll go for someone else. They will go for someone else. I guarantee you. If 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 if, the, if you think Romero can keep making these mistakes, he will have to have a good season. If they if he wants Madrid to come calling, he's not going to be able to have a, a, a mistake ridden season. He doesn't have these expect. mistakes in the Argentina team because they're set up to to you know combat the flaws that he does have in this Tottenham team. And that but the, and the well, Argentina Sunday, setup is much more similar the to the Real Madrid setup than the Tottenham setup is. Uh, the, the, what, what, what happened on Sunday has got nothing to do with setup. 
that's uh, well, that's just know. that's just one off uh, case. Yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, um, um, mindful of of this kind of castigation of Romero and the mistakes. Like you, you know, you need to sometimes see what happens just before you look at the mistakes. I, I, what was it? And was it the Leicester game when it kind kind of came over towards like the back post, and you see, okay, it looked like it, Romero was actually, but it's it happened before that. It happened again because Poro was there, then he wasn't there, and then they ran past each other and they didn't know who was doing what. This is again this whole thing about not knowing who's around you all the time of the way we do it i don't i don't think we can put that much just on on romero even these mistakes i think these were very like team mistakes uh, yeah. uh um, a lot of them not all of them but i think a lot of them are team mistakes it's like you know yeah there's an element of running past someone and 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 not maybe not picking up or not being aggressive enough on the corner or not dinner but you know this is it's all self-fulfilling right you know even the confidence on a defending a corner everyone's panicked we're all panicked we know what's coming there needs to be some improvement on our setup on our coaching i think minor tweaks i've said all along they're minor tweaks but that's why i'm ho hopeful but i think we can get the best out of, of of you know romero back to to his absolute very best because make no mistake he's absolutely world class and and i think real madrid would know that he's absolutely world class mm -hmm. and their football is different and maybe yeah. that suits them. Yeah, but Ancelotti's right? leaving next season, isn't he? Uh, whoever comes, you know, I don't even think they do it via the manager there anyway. You know, they pick out their targets and whatever, and and and, and they'll go after them, like Dave said. I, I don't think that that's a concern. I just don't want a a, a depreciating, depreciating, decaying asset, right? That that we it costs us so much money to replace, and not by not using the money that we recoup. And then I think that's where I'm worried about him. Uh, we need to we need to tie we need to tie it up. We need to tie mm. it up now. Um, yeah. Now I don't think that in all the stuff that we've spoken about, like if I think of the issues we've had in the years gone by, none of this stuff has been major major issues. I think we feel this is what I said about frustration. We feel like we're close. We feel like that these things are not that big of things to change. They're they're minor tweaks. They're finding out about a few players. It's blooding a few players. It's and getting used to his own surroundings. I think, maybe, um, but not far off. We wouldn't have to change what we did that much to be punching a little bit higher. So uh, you know we have to stay positive. But I don't know. Just join me in this postcard writing. I think we just need to send him that postcard. <laughs> <laughs> get writing, Max. Get writing. <laughs>